Glory to God in the highest. Won't you say this with me? Joy to the world. Hallelujah. Won't you just say these words? Joy to the world. I'm Pastor Tony K. Thomas of the Foundation of Power Outreach Ministries, and I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I just want to say happy holidays, Merry Christmas to all. And tonight I want you to, I just want you to feel the sense of the season. I want you to feel the spirit of joy that come to the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for this evening. We want to thank you for this time to continue the announcement of joy to the world. Thank you, Father God, that long ago you made the announcement and in the midnight, in the twink, in a moment, Lord, that a Savior has been born. And Lord, we know him to be Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, that he ruled and reigned at this very moment. And Lord, that as we celebrate this time and that we reminded of, the, of this great event of his birth, but also, Lord, that we can understand that we've had a birth in his birth through being born again to a living hope. We give you the praise and ask that all that are in attendance and all that we hear and review will sense your presence and the spirit of joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's get into the nice message. Joy to the world, for the Lord has come. What a wonder in 2021 that the world still have joy within it. But it isn't from the world, but comes to the world from heaven above. Many years ago, out in the fields outside of the city of David, this announcement came from heaven like a midnight cry that no one expected, but the timing was divinely orchestrated. Now can you imagine this same announcement in our world today? How fast, soon after, the, would the entire world witness the announcement? with the lightning fast social media and news wires. Can I ask you a question? Would the announcement that joy has come to this world change anyone or anything? Well, it has been announced and it has already come unto all people. Joy. Let's look at this first announcement and see if we can bring it into our times and lives. This is the Christmas story. And I find that so many have never really taken time to read it for themselves. I just want to share that I remember this story was given to me from the church when I was a little boy. When being about five years old before I could read. It was in a little book called the Golden Book. And it was called The First Christmas. I kept that book and as and soon as I was able to read, I started reading it. And I made it a tradition of myself personally every year to read it. And then when I became born again, I found out that it was in the Bible. I didn't need a little book anymore. So many of us can attend church and do a lot of activities spiritually, can attend Christmas singings and carols and, and activity plays. But have you ever read the story? Have you ever sat down and just read the story? I used to make myself read it before Christmas. And I do the same thing with the resurrection of Jesus. I make sure I read about his death, burial, and resurrection. It's something about taking the time out of my life to let God know that I really value his gifts of giving his life. 
Turn with me to Luke chapter 2. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. And if you're looking to that Luke chapter 2, I hope everybody would take, take time and read tonight. And maybe you'll read it again before Christmas. And it says, it hidden Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabitants of earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all the people were on their way to register for the census, each to his own city. Now Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was who was betrothed to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds. I want you to underline that word shepherds. Stand out in the fields and keep a watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood near them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And so, the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger, and suddenly there appeared and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army of angels praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. Give me a moment. Let me pause there. Verse 14, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. I want you to highlight that, with whom he is pleased. Verse 15, when the angels had, angels had departed from them into the heaven, the shepherd began saying to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened. This thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in a hurry, and found their way to Mary and Joseph, and the baby, as he lay in the manger. When they had seen him, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it was amazed about the things which were told them by the shepherds. 
But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as has been told them. What we just read is perhaps one of the greatest of the greatest creation of God Almighty. I was just meditating on the birth of Christ. And it took me back to the beginning. When God created everything, he said it was good. I want you to understand something that that's the birth of Christ or the entering of God into the flesh of man. What a creation. I'm talking about a whole new world will exist. However, the good turned into the same act that was done in heaven by the serpent of old. The creatures will rebel against God's word, but God wasn't done creating. In his infinite wisdom, he saw one more creation by bringing his own into the womb of a woman and giving him the name Jesus. What is this world without Christ? What is this world without joy? Jesus is the joy that has come into the world. I want you to go back in chapter, Luke chapter 2 and verse number 10. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. But behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. I want you to understand and meditate on this today. Great joy for all people. I want you to understand that that announcement came so that they could make an announcement. As I was saying earlier, you know, when we hesitate to, sh to talk about Jesus or share this joy, I want you to understand something that God says, great joy for all people. I don't care if people wag their head or look at me, it's differently sideways. But I want you to understand that I'm sharing the great joy that was shared with me. This creation of a savior is exactly what the world needs, needed, and exactly what the world needs today. Today we are, we are as the angels, when we announce the good news of our savior birth from within our born again lives. We share the joy that he has given us with others and allow them to see the hope and the peace from within our lives. A few years ago, I did a series entitled Joy, Jesus Over You. Yes, when Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you enter this world with the joy that he that didn't come from this world, but from God. This world's joy has a great price in which every soul would pay. I want you to know that many people live their life in this world trying to find joy in this world. I want you to know that this world doesn't have joy, but the joy came from heaven to the world. Joy to the world. What I'm getting ready to share with you, I hope you pay great attention to, I want you to go with me to Mark chapter 8 and verse 34. This is Jesus talking. Mark 8 verse 34. Take time and see this with your own eyes. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Look at verse 35 is what I want you to see. For whosoever would save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. 
For what does it profit a man or person to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in his turn for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now I want you to meditate on this because the announcement of the birth of the Savior came not with just a few angels, but with the armies of angels. I want you to understand something. What he's saying, come Nikila la Basanda. It ain't just important to quote Psalm 91, but it's also important to share the good news of Jesus Christ because when I share the good news, I'm surrounded by armies of angels. I want you to know something that this world cannot celebrate the announcement or the birth of this new creation because this world has no place for him. Why are so many why so many continue to seek this world for their joy and peace? Jesus said this. He said that when you seek the world for your joy, you forfeit your soul. Now I looked up the word forfeit today I understand what it means, but I want to explain this to you. The word forfeit means loss of privilege, loss of rights, loss of property as a penalty for doing wrong. I want you to know that when he said, what does a man give to gain this world? Live for this world, live for to find joy and happiness and peace in this world. You lose your privilege of life. You lose the rights to life. You lose the property of possessing your soul. I want you to know that the ways of God is not our ways. And he sees this as a wrongdoing. Are you listening to me tonight? I want you to know that these shepherds, when they heard this news and this announcement, didn't try to understand it. They heard to see it. And when they saw it, they left giving God praise and shared the good news of the things which they have heard, seen and heard. Do the world know this? How can they hear unless a preacher preach? And how can a preacher preach unless he's sent? We got a lot of announcement, announcing to make. I want to ask you a question. Have you discovered that joy tonight? That joy that's so full of you that you, the glory of God would allow you to announce to someone else about the birth of the Savior that's doing a great work in your life. Is Jesus over your life? Our father put the seed of joy into the womb of a woman. And he was born to bring peace and joy to all whom he is pleased. To please God is simple. It's simply to put our full trust in him. Hebrews 11 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. The world today is, is so full of trying to stay happy, trying to please everybody without God as a sinner. I want you to go back with me now to Luke chapter 2. And I want you to look at verse 10 again. It says, I bring good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. I want to talk to you today, a world, this world right now, and your neighbors, your friends, your family, they need joy. 
they need a great dose of joy. As I said, we are under the curse of never enough. We're never satisfied. We pray, but we don't believe that God can provide. I want you to understand something. That today, the world announced in America that life expectancy has decreased two years. The first time in 75 years since World War II. We're living in the most prosperous nation. We got more hospitals. We got more medical, more pills. But we're losing length of days. I want you to understand how have you discovered the joy of losing your life? Have you discovered the joy of laying down your life for the gospel? I want you to know at Foundation of Power, each one of you got a soul to bring to church to tell about the gospel. But as I said before, the only thing you can give back to God that, that he didn't give to you is another soul. He created us to win souls and and every we can do all this works but he said if you're ashamed of me I'll be ashamed of you before my father and his holy angels I want you to know that laying down our life is simply announcing the good news the great joy. And it's for all people. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what faith you think you have. I don't care if you're atheist. I don't care what your race is. Which is for all people. But it's through Jesus Christ. It's him being Lord of your life and a savior. I want you to understand something. 40 years ago, I was living for this world. But I made a decision to give my life to Christ. Now I want you to understand something. Today I see people, young, old, living their life without Christ. Living their life full of no direction, full of, of false hope. It's very sad. Because I know the moment of twinkling of an eye, they could lose their life and forever be forfeited from the rights, from the privilege, from the property, from possessing their soul for the glory of God. I want you to understand that everyone that comes near you, we have a responsibility and opportunity to share the good news. You're going to find out something about these shepherds. They weren't just the least and the poor in town. These were special shepherds that God made a special announcement to them. I want you to understand that as we live going to a third year where you would think that people would be given more consideration of life expectancy, with COVID-19 being the third leading cause of death, you know, in most people's opinions, they think that the 800,000 that had died was the largest number that have died. The number one cause of death in America is still heart disease. The number two is respiratory. Number three is COVID-19. I want you to understand something tonight. I'm talking to you that, er, that, that as we Focus on one thing. People are losing their life the same way they always lost their lives. Are you listening to me today? And the most affected are African American blacks, men. Are you listening to me today? I want to tell you that we better be on a journey and a mission as the shepherds to hurry with the good news. I mean, you know, the reason why most of us can't share the gospel with somebody else, and I'm going to say this, it may hurt, 
because you lost your witness. You played around with too many people and they don't believe you're serious. They see you as a joke. I want to tell you something that Jesus said, lose your life. You'll save your life. I am not trying to, I've never tried to be a friend of everybody. He said that, that I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. I've come to bring a division in your house where father be against son and mothers against daughter. He said the members of the household will become your enemies. But he says, I will give you a hundred times more. I want you to know today that the Bible says that those who do the will of God is my mother, brother, father, sister, and brother. We're one nation under God. There's still shepherds today that's keeping watch. I want you to understand something. There's still shepherds that can bring the good news, that can bow down and give glory to God in the highest, at the face of God. I want to talk to you tonight as we go into 22. 20, lead 2021 and 2022, go into 2022, that you focus on souls. Live your life like it's short. Live your life, stop trying to extend it one more day in this world without joy. I want to tell you something, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. What a, what a day to live. What a time when we're living in a time when life is not even important anymore. People are getting killed for nothing. Like it has no value. Blood runs in the streets like water. But yet, we can live without God. I want to encourage you tonight that this is good news. I want you to know that the angels said peace among people with whom he's pleased. I want God to be pleased with me. I want the Lord to hear the word, yes, my good and faithful servant. I want to hear the, the words that come enter into your rest. I want to say this to you tonight that we got work to do. It's not about size, but we can't get comfortable. It's not my for and no more. You can't just give God praise. But when God shows up, he ain't showing up for four. He shows up for all people. He comes so that you could be equipped to go out and spread the good news. If you got joy, I want to tell you something that you'll be able to talk about joy. You'll be able to share it. Are you listening to me tonight? We need to begin to share the word of God. Let people know where you stand. That's what me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But these shepherds had great response. They, they were just, they, can you imagine? You're out on your watch. And all of a sudden, there's a divine heavenly visitation. Each one of you have been visited by Christ when you were born again. Are you listening to me today? These shepherds were the least to make such an announcement. But they weren't the shepherds who were just youths and at entry level positions and low on the totem pole. Because most of the youths in those days worked the fields as, shep as, as shepherd boys. Remember when David came to the battle, his brother said, Who left you with such, who you leave those few sheep with? where these were not those kind of shepherds. According to 
a Jewish tradition and, and, a, and, and a book, the Miska. The shepherd sheep had to be in the wilderness. But these sheep were not in the wilderness. They were outside the city of David. Are you listening to me tonight? These were temple priests. These were their responsibility was to wash the sheep that was going to be used for sacrificial offering. And this was a special job, a high level job of, of protection. They were responsible to making sure that nothing attacked the sheep, that the sheep was without spot and without blemish, to make an ultimate sacrifice for the atonement of sin. I want you to understand that these shepherds, um, according to the myths now, um, they were keeping the sheep and lambs that would be used for temple service. They had to be outside the city while all the other flocks had to be in the wilderness, according to the myths now. The myths now speaks of the Messiah being revealed from the Migdal Elder Tower. This is amazing. I want you to understand something that the birth of Jesus is so concise that even, a, I mean, the most foolish person can understand this. Even the time when Jesus was given, the joy came into his world, it is recorded through the census of the ages of that time, which was exact record keeping. But according to the Miznam, the Migdal Elder Tower of the flock is an actual tower that stood just outside the town. It is like a watchtower, where inside was a priest that kept watch over the shepherds as they watched the flocks that was right outside the city. As I said, these were special flocks. These were special sheep. Can you imagine that God picked that place to make the announcement? Not only did he announce that a savior was born but it was the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the entire world. My, my, my. Joy to the world. I want to encourage you. I ask you to share this with your family's friends. I don't know if you did. I did. I always do. I got some people text me back, said thank you. But you know what? They heard the announcement. I'm announcing that joy has come to the world. I'm talking about a joy that it doesn't come in a toy. I'm talking about joy don't come in extra money. I'm talking about joy don't come in something new. But I'm talking about a joy that no matter what you face, you can smile at adversity. You can smile at illnesses and setbacks because it didn't take your soul. I want you to understand something that no matter what I go through, I've been rewarded. I still have right and property and privilege for my soul. Because God saved my soul. I want you to talk to you tonight that, that God picked this field right outside the city of David. I mean, the angels made the announcement. In the city of David, born to you this night, is the Savior. I want you to understand something. The priests understood 
that a Messiah was going to come and that it would be announced from the tower. And not only did the angel come, but the heavenly host said, Glory to God in the highest. I want you to understand something. That every time you share Jesus Christ and the joy of this world, you're announcing glory to God in the highest. That's why Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and his holy angels. I'm talking about glory tonight, people. The glory that shined so long ago still shine tonight. Still shine tomorrow in your announcement of Jesus Christ. I want you to know something. Time is out just dragging in and thinking, well, I just showed up that God is, is glad. I want you to know something. God wants your best. God wants your best every single minute. He wants your best when nobody else is watching. He wants your best when there's only a few. He wants your best when they're in the midst of a great assembly. He wants your best. And I want you to know that when those shepherds, they were afraid, you'll be afraid too. When the divine moment come and God's glory shows up, it gets your attention. And they hurried, and they found it to be as so, and revealed to others what they had seen. I want you to know something today. And it said they left there giving praise to God. I want you to go back with me to Luke chapter 2 in verse 20. And it says that the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. Jesse has been told them. Can you imagine the reason that you are in the fields? Keeping watch over the sacrificial lambs is now being announced as coming into the world. Wow. They ran to see, wouldn't you? The shepherds saw the, the praise given by the angels. And soon after seeing with their own eyes, they too gave praise. You know, every time we come together, we sing praises. We ain't singing to see how good somebody sounds. But we're praising God for this Jesus Christ being our Lord and Savior. Glory to God in the highest. You should love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your strength, and all your might. And love your neighbor as yourself. I want you to know that when I give God praise, I'm going to give God praise with all my mind, with all my strength. Are you listening to me today? I want y'all to know something. There is more in the invisible world than in the visible. There's eyes on you at all times. There's eyes of angels. There's eyes of the demons. There's eyes of God and there's eyes of Satan. Are you listening to me today? I want you to know that, that, that you don't live, most people don't live for the world they can't see. They live for the world they can't see. I want you to know that when the prophet spoke to his Gehazi, he said, open his eyes so he may see there'll be more with us than those who are against us. What has changed, people? I want you to know as we enter into all these different variances and waves, as I said last year in 2020, people were still dying from the other causes. Nobody's afraid of that. All right, listen to me today. But I want you to know that joy to the world. 
Are you finding your joy in knowing God? Are you trying to know Him more? By studying His Word? I want you to know, what are you planning to do to increase your knowledge of God? Are you waiting for somebody else to tell you everything? Are you seeking God for yourself? Are you become relaxed and satisfied? Are you listening to me today? But I believe the good news is still available and it still needs to be announced. Our world around us. I want you to know that we've relegated God to a few places. But we need God in every place. Are you listening to me today? I want you to know that the young people need God more than they ever have. I want you to know America needs God more than it ever have. America is in a war that's invisible. It's a spiritual war. It's not a political war. I told you long ago that our help don't come from politics, but from our pulpits. I guarantee you that most people in America never read Luke chapter 2 about the birth of Jesus. Most of them will never see an activity story on television. We flip through the radio like nothing is on. When we hear somebody preaching, we don't want to hear it. When we hear Christians sing, we turn our ears. Life without Christ is always in a crisis. I want you to know that God don't come to fix you up when the world has broken you. God is, is with you when you're pleased with whom he's pleased. Won't you put him first? Won't you seek him first? And his ways of doing things. Because this joy comes to the world not from the world the world you're going to have trials and tribulation but be of good cheer Christ has overcome the world I want you to know that greater is he that is in you when you know God, than he that is in the world. Joy to the world, for the Lord has come. I want you to, to, to this is soak in tonight, because we got great responsibility. It's not about filling the church, it's about announcing Jesus. Are you listening to me today? I want you to know that he knows everybody that you announce the gospel to. It's recorded. I want you to know that he knows when you don't. He knows who he tells you to talk to, but you decide that you don't want to lose your life. I'm not going to forfeit my soul because I want a right to the privileges and the benefits of God in my life. Are you listening to me today? The shepherd saw and praised and gave praise to God. This is the season to give praise to God for the greatest of all creation. His Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want you to know what I'm saying. New has come. That when you get born again, you are a new creature, a new creation. I want you to understand that un the old, they had to sacrifice 
animals and blood. But under the new, the Lamb of God died once and for all. Are you listening to me today? He took away the sins of the entire world. I want you to understand that God, in his infinite wisdom, created a new world. Nakun Basanda, when he presented his son, Jesus Christ. The world is full of darkness, but in Christ, he's the light of the world. As the light of life. Are you listening to me today? I'm talking about the joy that has come to the world. It's, he is worth giving praise. It is worth having him in your life. If you haven't made him your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to do so. I want you to understand that Christmas is, is a great time. When we celebrate it with the knowledge of the good news of great joy. When we understand that it's not a day to put up a tree, to decorate a house, or to have a great meal. But it's a time to acknowledge the new creation that Jesus Christ has come. And you know what's so wonderful? For those who have made him Lord, we live expecting his return. He's coming again. Praise be the living God. This is what Christmas is. If we were going to put it on a calendar, then let's use it for what it is for. Recognizing and acknowledging that joy has come to the world. Joy to the world. Today the world needs to receive the joy that comes from with Christ. People isn't in a service. This isn't in a service or a building, but it's in our lives. Our lives will produce the evidence of the announcement. I want you to turn with me. To 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 8. Say amen when you get there. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 8. And it says, And though you have not seen him, you love him. This, this, this blows me away, man. I'm going to tell you something. I love Jesus. I want you to know that you can love him even though you've never seen him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him. I want you to know that I believe in Jesus. Look what he said. You greatly rejoice with joy. I want you to understand this same joy. This is a powerful scripture that goes back to that day. The announcement of the angel was great in the city of David. Born unto you is great good news and great joy. He says you greatly rejoice. I'm telling you that when you come into the house of God, when you come into the presence of another saint, I just want to be able to talk plainly to somebody about the love of God. It's not no squeaky, hold your head down, Afraid to open in your mouth. Afraid to talk too long about the good news. He says, you he greatly rejoice with joy. Watch this. Inexpressible. I still can't express the joy. And full of glory. Now I wonder where Peter got that from. Because that night during the announcement, it said, glory to God in the highest. And when the angels came, they were surrounded by the glory of God. 
I want you to know that when somebody sees you, they should see and sense the great joy and the glory of God. You can't help but announce that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, I believe Jesus. I live my life according to that word. I want you to understand something that it provides comfort, peace of mind. It protects you. It keeps you from being down and depressed. But keeps you lifted up with a joy inexpressible. And full of glory. The world is losing this mind. Are you listening to me today? While we find our mind in Christ. Turn with me to Psalms, real quick. Psalm 16. What a scripture for 2021. Psalm 16 and verse 11. Thou wilt make known to me the path of life. Thy presence is fullness of joy. In thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The angels long ago announced and glory to God in the highest. Luke 2 verse 14. And on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. I want you to know that Jesus came to save the entire world. When he died on the cross, as many as believed him, he gave them the right to be born again. I want you to know something that the only way people can know is that you announce it. Let me tell you, there are so many people, so many new people. Won't you ask God for new people to share the news with? Because guess what? Somebody's praying for their son, their daughter, praying for their child, praying for their brother, praying for their husband, praying for their wife to be saved. It could just be you as a co-worker. It could just be you walking down the street. The Bible said that we, we, we sow and we water, but God causes the increase. When you share the good news, it could be the answer to someone's prayer. I got family members, and I'm praying for them, but I'm also praying that God send witnesses across their path. They may not be able to hear, listen to me, but they can hear from somebody else because I'm going to share the good news with others. I want you to know that they're going to put Christmas on a calendar. Then let it be a Christmas in your life. A true Christmas of having this joy, rejoicing greatly with the joy inexpressible and full of glory. Are you happy tonight? I want you to know, are you full of joy and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding? That you can look at God and know that he saved my soul. He gave me the right and the privilege and the property of inheritance, his blessing. Praise be to the living God. Glory to God in the highest. I want you to know joy to the world 
is exactly that. It tells us that we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're just passing through. I want you to know if joy had to come to this world, there's no need to look for joy in this world and from this world. You got to look to where the joy came from, from heaven above. I want you to know that that's why greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. What a joy. What a peace. What a joy divine. I want you to know something tonight that each one of us, God knows that we're able to share the good news. You don't have to talk so long, but it's good sometimes just to show somebody a scripture, show somebody what the word is doing in your life, how God has changed your life. And that you have received life full of joy. I don't want to go back because I can see where my life would have been without Christ when I look at the lives of those who don't have Christ. I made the right decision. Are you listening to me today? And I forever give God praise and greatly rejoice with the joy inexpressible for being so young, but understanding what God has done is still another miracle. He's in the saving of souls. And he wants to save all souls. So tonight, won't you just bow your head as we put our thoughts on this joy. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that you stir hearts, Lord, that that they real, we all realize we got to share the good news. We got to share the word of God with our Lord and Savior, about our Lord and Savior with others. Help us to find that peace in Jesus' name that surpasses all understanding. Lord, let us know that as the shepherds long ago, that you came to a specific place for a specific time to announce the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God in the highest. Let us know that every time we share your good, the good news and the great joy with others, that we're surrounded by glory in heaven above. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and 